Welcome to Reclaim Terrain. In this episode, we are covering some of the most frequently asked questions I get from my community. Questions like, how can I tie faith into my business? Or how can I incorporate faith into my niche or my brand and it not be confusing? Or how do I even know if I should incorporate faith into my business? And then the nerves come. You start thinking you want to incorporate faith into your business, but then you start doubting it because you don't want to scare people away. I totally get this, which is why in this episode, we are going to cover how to know if you should infuse faith into your business and three ways to incorporate faith into your business successfully. That being said, grab your pen and paper, maybe a cup of coffee, and let's dive on in. But before we do, you're going to want to make sure you are on my email list because every single Tuesday, you're going to be getting the weekly podcast delivered straight to your inbox with an implementation guide that goes hand in hand with every single podcast episode. You are going to be receiving journal prompts and action items that literally go right along with every weekly podcast episode for free. This is because I am all about implementation. And while I love that you are listening to the show, I really want to make sure that this sinks in for you and that you are taking aligned action. So if you want access to the power prompts, aka your implementation guide every single week, definitely make sure you are on the list by going to bit.ly slash power prompts. And I will also have that linked in the show notes for you. So without further ado, let's really dive on in. Hey queen, welcome to Reclaim Terrain. I'm your host, Hannah Brindley, daughter of the king, certified life coach, and faith-fueled business mentor. I know you are so sick of feeling like you've worked so hard in your business with little to no reward while staying in the same cycle of self-sabotaging tendencies you know are keeping you stuck. And because of that, I know you are craving to end this never-ending cycle of self-destruction and cultivate a successful Holy Spirit-led business without letting it become your idol. So if you are ready to be fueled by faith over flesh, fight your battle spiritually instead of physically, take bold action on your God-given callings, and finally create that thriving faith-fueled business, then you're in the right place. Go ahead and reheat your coffee, grab a notebook and pen, and let's dive. Now, back in the day before I actually started incorporating faith into my own business, I knew, I just had a feeling that the Lord was really calling me to do that. I just didn't quite know how, and I kept second guessing myself. I kept doubting it, and I even started having a lot of fear regarding sharing more of my faith online. I would share it here and there, but I really had no idea how to incorporate it into my brand and into my niche. So I started just by posting a little bit here and there just regarding my faith and what the Lord was teaching me. And I just kept praying that the Lord would reveal a clear direction and brand and niche and and path for my business because I felt totally confused. I kind of felt like it was out of alignment. I just didn't really feel like my brand or niche really made any sense. I felt like it was too separate, but I knew I was being called to bring business and faith together in some way. I just didn't quite know how at the time. That being said, I obviously just kept taking step after step, just letting the Lord guide me and my business. And wow, like he has revealed so much to me around bringing faith into business and into different niches. And now I get to help people do it every single day. It is truly incredible, but I know one of the biggest questions that you have right now is, should I even bring faith into my brand or niche or my business? So we're going to tackle that question first, okay? So to start here, there are three big clues to know if you should be incorporating faith into your brand and into your business. Let's dive into each one. The very first one is that if it has been put on your heart. This might seem a little cliche, but listen, if you keep wondering if you should be incorporating faith into your business, I would bet it has been put on your heart for a reason. 
if you feel like it's been put on your heart, but you're still questioning it, I would ask yourself these questions. Where are the doubts actually coming from? Are the doubts coming from my flesh or are the doubts coming from the Lord? If this is something you keep coming back to, yet you keep ignoring due to fear of the unknown or fear of change, Holy Spirit is probably gently nudging you to move forward with this and obey him despite the fear. However, if you are wanting to incorporate faith simply for selfish purposes, I would encourage you to rethink this and realign your motives and your intentions. So let's move on to clue number two. Clue number two is that you're lying if you actually don't bring faith into your business. Now, what do I mean by this? You should know if you should incorporate faith into your business, if you would be withholding from your clients and community or lying to them if you don't bring it into your business. I know this seems a little extreme, but let me give you an example. Back before I started incorporating faith into my business, I had a huge wake up call with Holy Spirit. Now you've probably heard this story before if you've listened to my podcast at all because I talk about it very often. But if you haven't heard it, please go back and listen to episode one of the show. I go into a lot of detail about this wake up call. But basically, when I was really struggling financially, and also trying to control the situation with my own strength, I ended up surrendering it all to the Lord. I actually begged him to take away my obsession with success and money in my business and replace it with an obsession for him. And in that moment, I can't even explain it to you, but he was so present and I just felt this immense wave of peace. Like I knew I had finally surrendered and it was so freeing, but then The crazy thing is, or not so crazy thing, is that the very next day, I ended up somehow getting on two sales calls and closed them both on the phone back to back. And I knew that wasn't a coincidence and it was totally all because of Holy Spirit. He flowed through me as soon as I stopped trying to do it all on my own without him. So that being said, while learning the skills and strategies needed to grow a business are super important. I knew that if I didn't share my experience with Holy Spirit, I wouldn't be truly supporting my community and clients the best that I could. I knew that if I didn't support my community and clients in building a faith-fueled foundation, their business would crumble just like mine was about to. And I also knew that the true freedom my clients are actually searching for isn't in their business, it's in Jesus. It's not in financial freedom or time freedom or anything in this physical world. It's with Jesus. So I knew I had to speak up. I knew that if I didn't incorporate it, I would be lying and I would be withholding information. So a really great question to ask yourself here is, are you withholding information from your clients and your community? If you are, then it's probably a sign that you should start infusing faith into your business. Now, clue number three is if it's honoring and glorifying to the Lord. As believers, our greatest purpose is to know Jesus and to make him known. Does that mean your business itself has to incorporate faith? Absolutely not. But perhaps that means you share that you're reading your Bible on your stories or you share your favorite scripture. Maybe it just means your community knows you love Jesus, but your offers themselves don't necessarily have to incorporate it. This is actually how I started. I didn't incorporate it into my offers at first. I simply started by incorporating it into my content. And from there, I knew I had to start incorporating it into my offer. So as you can see, your business itself does not have to incorporate it. However, if he has called you to know him and to make him known, then it's time to make him known. You don't have to do it on social media or with your business per se, but I do encourage you to make him known somehow. Now for me, I chose my business because my business ultimately is my ministry. 
Now, those are the three clues to know if you should actually bring faith into your niche and your business. And once you pray and you journal this out and you just ask yourself these questions, and then maybe you'd uncover that you actually do want to start incorporating faith into your business. I actually have three ways that you can start doing that today. So let's go ahead and dive into the first one. So number one is to actually start incorporating specific faith topics. Now, there are so many ways to seamlessly do this, but I've found that there are three major topics to include to incorporate faith, no matter what your niche is. So let's talk about each one of those. The first one is identity. So you can probably guess that this is all about putting our identity in Christ. Now, why is this important for every single niche and how do we do that? First and foremost, if we are subconsciously not putting our identity in Christ, we end up putting our identity in other things like our business, money, our looks, relationship status, weight, productivity levels, and the list could go on. So essentially, we will measure our worthiness by things that we see in this physical world, which means we are putting our identity in this physical world and not in Christ. Now, because of this, this can be seamlessly added into your coaching, into your curriculum, into your content, no matter the niche, because it's more than likely that your potential clients and community have probably unknowingly linked their identity with their current reality in this physical world. So as an example, let's say they are not making any money in their business, or they can't seem to lose 50 pounds, or they've been single for years and want to get married. You know, I've also found this goes hand in hand with idolatry. I'm going to use myself as an example here. When I was so obsessed with my business and making money, I was unknowingly idolizing success in my business, and that's because I also unknowingly linked my identity to it. So if you want to start incorporating this into your business, you'll want to start out by making sure your community and your potential clients and your clients really understand their identity and their worthiness is found in Christ alone. Truth be told, this is a really core topic that you will probably always come back to in your coaching or your course if you are going that route. Now, if you're not sure where to start with this, Get in the word, really. Just get in the Bible. That is going to tell you everything you need to know. Now, as for the second topic that you can cover, it is spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is happening at every moment. So how can you incorporate this into your business? No matter what your niche is, you will find that your client will run into roadblocks, limiting beliefs, or obstacles that get in the way. And as a mentor, it is part of your job to help lead them and support them through these obstacles. And I have personally found that anything going on in the spiritual manifests in the physical. There is constant warfare going on between both sides. So instead of just simply coaching them through the physical, you can coach them through the spiritual. But how do you do this? You teach them how to fight spiritually instead of physically, using prayer, putting on the armor of God, taking thoughts captive, teaching them about healing and deliverance. You get to encourage them to get into the word and spend time with God. There are truly so many ways to do this, but that will help get you started. Now, the third topic that you can cover is Holy Spirit guidance. I have found that many individuals want to be guided by the Holy Spirit, and truly, this is so important. So how would this actually work in your business? First and foremost, you will want to encourage them to listen to Holy Spirit over everyone, including yourself and their own flesh. So for example, if you're a health coach and you're finding that your client can't seem to stop eating junk food, encourage them to get into the word and pray and ask the Lord what he wants them to do regarding their decisions. If you're a business coach and you're finding that your client is all over the map with ideas, ask them what one thing the Lord has been putting on their heart. Encourage them to get into prayer and in the word and see what they discover. Then have them go all in on that and let all the other distractions pass by them in that season. 
Now, as for me, I also like to incorporate hearing from the Holy Spirit in your business or recognizing when you're being guided by your flesh or the enemy in your business and deciphering between trials from God and temptations from Satan in your business. So as you can probably see, identity, spiritual warfare, and Holy Spirit guidance could all be major topics you can incorporate into your business. And the thing is, is that I'm super passionate about making sure that this truth gets spread. So if you see someone else talking about identity in Christ or helping others navigate through spiritual warfare or hearing from Holy Spirit, try not to compare yourself or get jealous or feel like, oh my goodness, we're doing the same thing. This is a good thing. (laughs) We should want to get the truth out. So if you find yourself getting jealous or insecure when you see someone incorporating faith into their business the same way you do, then I want to encourage you to get back to him and take a look at your intentions. Take a look at your heart again. Because I want to gently remind you here that this isn't necessarily your business. This is God's business and you are a vessel for him. Comparison, jealousy, and pride are really sneaky ways for the enemy to weasel himself back into your life. Don't let him. Take those thoughts captive. So all of that to say, let's move on to the second way that you can actually be incorporating faith into your niche or your business. So the second way you can be doing this is actually putting a faith-based spin on your brand pillars. This is where you're going to want to think specifically about your idol client. So here's an example for you. Let's take my own brand and business. My quote unquote niche is faith-fueled business coaching. Now, some brand pillars could be money mindset, productivity, and navigating limiting beliefs. Now, I'm going to walk through some core topics within each of these brand pillars that essentially have a faith-based spin on them. So for the first brand pillar of money mindset, I can talk about the topic of how to stop finding your identity in money and lack thereof and finding your identity in Christ instead. Another topic I could cover is navigating charging for services while also not being greedy or viewing money as an idol. And then another topic I can cover is being afraid of money is still giving money the power and the only entity we should be giving power to is God. Then as for the brand pillar of productivity, I can talk about taking intentional steps towards God's mission without letting it become your idol, obeying God by putting faith into action, and learning the beautiful balance of discipline and surrender. And then the last brand pillar I have for you is navigating limiting beliefs like doubt, imposter syndrome, and perfectionism. And things I could cover look like how to fight them by putting on the armor of God, how to take thoughts captive, and forming battle plans. And battle plans are essentially how I fight my battles spiritually and how I teach my clients to fight them spiritually as well. So as you can see, I took topics, talked about often in the online space like money mindset, productivity, and navigating limiting beliefs, but I put a faith-based spin on them according to what my ideal client actually needs. And you can do the same thing with yours. So this leads me into the third way you can actually bring faith into your niche and your business, which is by focusing on your community. Here's what I mean by this. You can be praying for your clients, You can pray over your clients on calls. You can pray over your potential clients and pray for them on calls. You can host group Bible studies for your clients or host prayer circles. You can encourage people in your community to send you prayer requests in your stories or email or in your Facebook group. You can ask your clients how you can best pray for them each day or week. You can encourage your clients to dig into scripture or give your clients a set scripture to read and study. There are so many ways you can incorporate faith into your business. And I know I did not name them all here by any means, but I do hope all of this gets you started in some way. So if you enjoyed today's episode and you really want to take time to implement this, then I want to encourage you to join the weekly email newsletter. 
because if you are on my email list, you will receive an email every single week with the podcast episode delivered straight to your inbox in addition to power prompts, aka journal prompts and action items, which is essentially your implementation guide, that go hand in hand with every single podcast episode moving forward. If you want to make sure you are on the list, make sure you go to bit.ly slash power prompts. That is bit, B-I-T dot L-Y slash power prompts. I will also have that linked in the show notes for you. I hope to see you in my inbox, but if not, I will see you in the next episode. Bye friend. Hey queen, don't head out just yet. If this podcast has blessed you in some way, it would mean the absolute world to me if you left a written review of the show over on Apple Podcasts. It truly lights a fire in me knowing how God has impacted you through this platform. And since I absolutely adore connecting with you, please, please, please screenshot this episode or your review and post it on your stories on Instagram and tag me at Hannah Brindley. I can't wait to see you over there. So much love to you.